trunk like paper, cause we from that same. Slab is just a hobby, it's an art. License and insurance ain't enough, you need heart. I remember when it hit me way back in 83. Swankers were on the road by the true OGs. Now it's 14 years later and the shit ain't stopped. I got the things in the truck on the way to the shop. See the big boy, candy washed up, looking good. Candy red jeans, special attention to the home at the wood. A hundred goes clear over candy sunset. In my lap, I'm rolling Roll burger, flipping jacks, pushing beers, swinging legs, straight to Nike, starting stuff. Piece of chain, pocket stacks, south side, looking good on that hustle every day. Cause we gon' stack paper so we can parlay. Roll that burger, flipping jacks, pushing beers, swinging legs, straight Okay, so tell me about your your brother, Dylan, cause that's somebody that I always hear. I know I heard in uh, Scarface, Let Me Roll, uh, Roll a little, little Further, and I See No D. D. And his brother named Dollar S A O G. Yeah. So tell me, tell me about your brother. <clears throat> my brother. Shit, it ain't never been nothing like my brother. They like the king of, the king of Sunnyside, the king of Houston. You know, however you whatever, however you wanna call it. Shit, you know, he had a million dollar race car in the early nineties. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so we used to go out there and. Go to the racetrack in Porter and Baytown and race with uh, the ghetto boys, Phillip and Maine and mm -hmm. Ty Tom, Bay Bay, Cricket, and all them cats, you know what I'm saying, Northside players. So you just go out there and race cars and shit. Mm -hmm. And that's what his style, him and Toast style was similar. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Playboy, you know, ladies, men type shit, you know. But my brother, he was hella gangster though. Mm -hmm. He was hella gangster, you know what I'm saying? He was on some, you know, back in those days, you know, it was a little rougher, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, and he wasn't big in stature, but you know, he'll pick up something and knock the hell out you or shoot mm. shit at you or some shit. Mm. But, so, he was just a little bit more gangster, but he was playboy and, you know, shit. He was, the, he was that nigga. Yeah, cause I ain't gonna lie. I heard that song and I heard a song from Sauce Walker. I don't know if you're familiar with Sauce Walker from Houston. Yeah, for definitely. That's he my said, little, that's said, my nephew. He said in the song, because <clears throat> uh, he was talking about, uh, you know, just the Houston OGs, and he said, darling, it's a OG, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, that's he, my brother. That nigga, that little nigga is like my blood, down there like my son, like my, you know what I'm saying? Them niggas came up under under my tutelage, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, like the sauce, like uh, my nephews, both of them, Sancho and uh, D Money and and Walt, them niggas, all them niggas came up together mm -hmm. and they was tight like glue and so he like family, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so he know what time it is, so he down with the family uh, yeah. like that, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So your brother really meant something to the South Side during that time, just well, he, as much as Toast did. He, he was everything, because, you know, when it come to, like, the way niggas play the game nowadays, like, my brother, he was a, my brother was a real nigga. So the thing is, is he, he, he not only did his thing in the drug game, but so he got high before, and so the thing is, is, like, he never looked down on, 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 on nobody. Like he treated the doorman with the same per respect as he treated the owner, because he understood that, you know, you could be down and out one day, and you could be up on your game tomorrow. So mm. he had homeboys that get high and shit, and whenever they in their worst way, he just look out for them and say, man, you know, get off this shit and get you some money, man. You know, mm. and just talk to them in a real nigga way, like, man. You get mm -hmm. yourself together, get off this shit, they get some money. Yeah. That's the type of person he was. He okay. was, you know, can he, you, can you he speak, loved to see niggas have money. Yeah. Can you speak up on his passing if, passing if you want to? I mean, he meant everything to us. Like my partner with Reggie Green, he went there this time and 
And so we was all finna do this music shit together. And shit, when Reggie came home, you know, pretty much, you know, everybody was, everybody was gone, shit. You know, mm -hmm. Dylan had, what happened with Dylan had happened. Screw was gone. Uh, Toast was gone. Shit, everybody was gone by the time when he came back home, so that shit kind of fucked everything up. Mm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, I heard that when that Scarface let me roll, I, I don't know, you can kind of uh, clarify it or not, but I heard in that Scarface let me roll on the video shoot, they was waiting on your brother to pull up, but it, that was the time that they found him. Is, is that, that was, correct? That wasn't let me roll. That was a uh, big mellow funk with your mind. So like ninety four. About ninety four. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. So that was ninety four. <clears throat> big mellow funk with your mind video. We was all out there waiting for him to pull up, and uh, shit, he didn't pull up. Mm. And word got to us that you know they had found him, and shit. So we just kind of. Uh, we shut the whole video down, man, and mm -hmm. we was all out there, Kennebib, Mello, and shit, you know, them niggas come back with a car full of guns and shit, and, but shit, it was too late, he was gone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Okay, okay. So can you kind of speak on your slab influence, like who influenced you to ride slab? My influences, like the niggas that was close to me, my influence was the nigga in my neighborhood, Floyd, man, my nigga Money. We call that nigga Money because Floyd was on his money too, you know what I'm saying? Are you but game, right? Are you game, you know what I'm saying? And so Floyd was low to the flow. Floyd always just, he ain't a man of many words, especially not in the, in the presence of strangers or you no know, shit like that. So Floyd, he was low to the flow and my nigga Poopy, you know what I'm saying, coming mm -hmm. up. Them was the niggas that, when you talk about Slab Kings at that time, them the niggas we considered the Slab Kings because them niggas was holding. Mm. And according to that era, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Niggas had the whole shit. Hollywood, Frenchy Dips, Pinstripes, you know what I'm saying? Sitting, mm. that motherfucker was sitting right, you know what I mean? Coming down, banging, knocking, you know, clear. Mm. I'm talking about nigga, I ain't talking about just bass. I'm talking about nigga. You hear the words and everything, nigga. Clear, jamming, put together. You know mm. what I'm saying? So them niggas was like the influences for us. Yeah. You know. And uh, so, you know, the 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 slab shit went through different phases. Mm -hmm. You had the cutlass and the regal era, the Grand Prix era. Then niggas went luxury, and by the time our era came through, we was rolling drop tops and shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, okay. Man, it's like, did, during this time, because I know I talked to you on the phone and you said that it was almost law, or like a, a click, like y'all click, S.A. Fools, that y'all was kind of like, oh, we only rolled at 84s. During this time, did y'all know That's it. That the difference between the two? Absolutely. Mm. The 84s look like spider webs. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The threes, they was kind of cupped. They was tight lipped mm -hmm. the 84s had the curl lip mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and it was a distinct difference mm -hmm. so we wasn't rolling nothing but foes mm -hmm. in order for you to come correct you had to have foes yeah that was part of the deal yeah you know what i mean my foes this is what's so crazy how i got my 84s with my partner tim strain i hear about i hear about tim strain tim strain and so Tim, Tim Strain used to have a doodle -doo brown, I think it was cutlass, you know what I'm saying, back in the game. That bitch was clean with the uh, flakes and shit in it. That bitch was hard. And so Tim had his 84s up in the attic. Them mm. hoes was spotless, chrome, you know what I'm saying? And he wasn't going to sell them. But the proposal I made to him at the time was like something he had never heard before. Mm -hmm. So I kind of set the market for what, what 80 foes would cost. So I ended up giving that nigga like $4,000 for them 80 foes. Yeah. It was so much money, he couldn't turn them down. And during this time, $4,000 for some foes, that was, was crazy. 
right? Yeah. So, so when I did that, that's, that reset the market for 80 foes, and every nigga that came on the slab understood and knew, man, you pull up on them threes, you gonna, it's, it's not even close. Don't yeah. even do it. You know what I'm saying? So you had to have foes. And a little while after that, man, I started hearing the prices for them foes. It was crazy. Nigga was paying $20,000 for them hoes at one point in time. Mm -hmm. And so a little while after that, Texas Wire and Wheel, I guess they got the patent to them and they put the shit back in production. And so now you can see all these other different variations of swingers, the shit way out and all kind of shit. But yeah. them OGs, okay. them the ones though. Okay. And at this time, you was going to schoolhouse, correct? We had been going to schoolhouse. Can you kind of just break down like how you even got to know who DJ Screw was? How we got to know Screw was, man. So Daryl Scott, we couldn't get Daryl Scott. We would, we couldn't get Daryl Scott to make us no personal mixes. So we was looking for a DJ to make personal mixes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, one of my homeboys, you know, he kind of cut into screw. So we told him we were looking for a DJ to do personal mixes and he cut into screw. And uh, so we went over there and we bumped around some ideas and shit. And so that's when the slow down music came about. Cause you know, slow down music had already been around with Daryl Scott when he slowed down Mr. Groove. Mm -hmm. So me and my partner Tremere, we had already been fucking with slow down music and all of that shit. So long story short, we got with Screw, slowed down music, you know what I'm saying? We started doing that shit and we started making personal mixtapes with songs and shit that we wanted on them. And so, man, the motherfuckers were so jamming. I come to the hood, my little cousin, uh, Spider and little man, them niggas used to steal my tapes and shit. Yeah. And uh, so Screw ended up being, uh, he started, he ended up being our uh, personal DJ mm. for the SA Fools. He was the DJ for the group. Mm. The first beats that we made for the SA Fools, Screw made them. Mm. Straight up. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so a lot of that shit never came out because like I say, niggas start dying and shit, you know what I mean? And so a lot of the shit never came out, but shit, Screw was the, <laughs> Screw was the nigga making the beats. Did 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 the SA Fool? I mean, not the SA Fool. Did DJ Screw kind of take over the South Side? DJ Screw took over the world. Mm. He ain't just take over the South Side. DJ Screw took over the world, mm. man. Listen, let me tell you something. It got so crazy, like in Houston in the South and shit. Like, niggas didn't want the regular version. They wanted the CD. They wanted the tape screwed already. Uh -huh. You feel what I'm saying? So, so I, I, on, my, on my new CD, I said, uh, I said something eluding the screw, you know what I'm saying? Like, niggas trying to, you know, take the nigga legacy and shit. And so I was just talking about people taking his money, taking his style, and using it and get money making money off it and it's his his legacy like a nigga legacy you gotta let a nigga have his legacy mm. you know what i'm saying you gotta let a nigga have his legacy mm. so with michael watson and, and and those guys i understand and it ain't no personal shit, but it's just i'm an old school nigga, right and so when we came up you couldn't bite a nigga style mm. you feel me like that was just out of the question you couldn't battle me using my style you feel me like if we get in a rap battle you sound crazy in a motherfucker trying to battle me using my style mm -hmm. it's out of this world so i just feel like that legacy should be left to him and his family if they want somebody to play screwed up music on the radio it should be dj red if that's who they family elected to do that shit Keep it, keep his legacy with his family. Yeah. Are those zebras? Yeah, these, these uh, volas, these custom made from Italy. Uh, this leather, this zebra suede, 
Uh, all the Vola shoes are custom made from Italy and shipped from Italy. Do Volas have anything for women? Yeah, Volas have stuff for women and kids. Uh, Volas have wedges, heels, matching purses, uh, belts, shirts. It's the new fashion brand. Yeah, there's uh, people in the entertainment industry, uh, rappers, producers, all different type of artists. Uh, there's athletes, uh, everyday uh, people that love fashion, you know, uh, professional business people, and just people that love fashion all over the world that's embracing the Volaz fashion. And where can I get mine? Volaz.biz. You got to get it from Volaz.biz because they special ordered, special made in Italy, shipped from Italy straight to your doorstep. Volaz.biz. time was it kind of like... We beefing, because you know, you always hear about the south side and north side beefing. Was it because of the music or was it because of the slabs? Because I know it became into the music, but was it more so like because of the slabs? I think it became, I think some niggas made it personal. So what happened is like one of my partners, I ain't gonna say no names. He used to go on the north side and he used to drop nigga shit and he bring the rims back and sell them on the south side. So some north side niggas caught wind of it. They start coming out here, stealing cars, bringing the rims back to the south, to the north side. Uh -huh. So it became a little thing. And, that, and it was, they, they was just dropping cars though. You know, crime, like what I told you. you, know, you come out there, you leave your alarm off, your rim's gonna be gone. Your car gonna be sitting on the belly. It was just criming. Mm -hmm. Then it turned into a bunch of other shit. And I think, I guess Lil Kiki and some other, some guys, they made say some things on the mixtape. And Northside niggas took exception to it because Northside niggas was rocking with the whole screwed up shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They had love. It was love. And to hear a nigga diss them, it was fucked up. Because them niggas had love, and it was just some, it was a funky thing. And so that's how kind of uh, Michael Watts emerged because, like, Northside niggas wanted to be able to, they wanted to freestyle on a screw tape. Mm. But since they couldn't do it on a screw tape, they had to create a, a, a version or a variation of it. And that's how Michael Watts emerged. Mm. You feel me? Yeah. And so it kind of took a life of its own like that but in my era we didn't per se have beef with north side niggas like we was all getting money together mm. like it was just real mm. and so you know we capped on niggas just like niggas cap on niggas mm. you know what i'm saying if you out there you doing some country shit we gonna tell you nigga that shit look country in the motherfucker nigga you need to take that shit off of there and put you some such 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 on you know what i'm saying yeah so we talk shit to each other like that and it was just all real, but later on, then all that other shit came in the fold, yeah. and it just became a thing. But okay, okay. And our real, our real niggas just fucked with real niggas. Do it kind of trip y'all out that what y'all was doing either on the slab or on the screw tapes, how it got, you know what I'm saying? To where like we riding in 2024, still listening to DJ Screw, you know what I'm saying? Michael Watts, do that trip you got? It fucks me up. I mean, you got people like Drake. It that, fucks me up. Yeah. It fucks me up how this shit has permeated not only all over the music industry, but all over the world. Mm. L.A., New York, Philly. Like, niggas love the culture, the swinging and the candy and the, the screwed up shit to go with the getting high and the puffing and the, you know what I mean? Because that's what it was. It was a... It was a feeling, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So listen to screwed up music when you high and you coming down and you're back. It's a feeling, you feel me? And mm -hmm. it's a feeling that you wouldn't understand until you experience it. Mm -hmm. You coming down, that motherfucking shit, you know what I'm saying? My sweet honey had to go away. Cha cha. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You hide, nigga, that shit jamming. It's a feeling. Yeah. Do you ever see, like, the slab culture fading away from Houston? Absolutely not. 
didn't at one point they kind of did for a second? I think niggas' cars start looking funny because a lot of niggas don't understand the slab, right? Slabbing is not about you just putting rims on a car. That's not a slab. Slabbing is when you take a car and you use your imagination and you turn it into something out of your imagination. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm. So that's what slabbing is, is. When you take your imagination and you put it to a car and you turn it into something straight up out of your imagination. Because when we started doing cars, we cutting the wheelbase out so we could put bigger swingers up in there because the cars probably didn't roll 15s at the time. They only rolled 14s. So we'll cut the wheelbase out so the 15s can fit under it. Uh, like I say, the the wood grain, the the TVs, the you know what I mean? We laced that shit all the way up and they started coming off the assembly line like that. Mm. Like Cadillac and different motherfuckers took notice to that shit and they started making the cars like that. Mm. But we were just doing that shit having fun and we never thought that corporate America would look at that shit and take notice and start creating the cars like that mm. with the presidential kits. Like the Cadillac truck come with the TVs and the wood and yeah. you get the whole presidential shit. We never thought that would happen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We were just having fun. We were being creative. And when we did those cars, that was the whole deal. Like Surround by Sound was before his time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When Floyd, he created Surround by Sound, that was before his time. Like these young niggas right now, they'll die to have Surround by Sound. Mm. Had that trunk tricked out like just, yeah. you know. Yeah. They died ahead of that yeah. shit right now. So by this being Slab OG's TV, what's your definition of a Slab OG? And who do you feel like is the Slab King? I don't believe there's no particular Slab King. There's no such thing. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because certain niggas dominated certain eras. Mm -hmm. Like if I was to say, they say fools, we was the Slab Kings of our era because we dominated our era. Mm. And when I was growing up, Floyd and Poopy, and Nick, they dominated their era. You know what I'm saying? And later on down the line, JC and uh, Condre, mm. you know, they was going at it. They was kind of dominating their era. Mm. So I don't think there's no particular Slab King. There's no such thing. Yeah. What's you your definition saying? of a Slab OG? A Slab OG? Mm. A slab OG to me is like niggas who, a OG period is a nigga who is an original nigga, meaning original is the blueprint. Mm. Everything else is spun off of that. Mm. So the nigga who is the functioning blueprint, that's an OG. Yeah. Like that's a nigga who gave you the blueprints, the direction, and gave you an idea of what it's supposed to be like. Mm. That's OG. Okay, okay. Gave you some game, you know what I'm saying? Put yeah. you up on your on your business. So, yeah. man, my last question I always like to ask, man, what's your top five greatest slabs of all times that you seen with your eyes? Top five greatest slabs of all time that you seen? Of course, I'm gonna say mine. The Catalina was crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I would have to say. Of uh, JC, he did his thing with the convertible, with the six, what is it, seven wheels, mm -hmm. when he did the burgundy, and he had the mail in that bitch. I mm -hmm. have to get JC his props. Um, three mo, the coldest slabs that I ever seen. Quincy's Impala. Mm -hmm. That Did it have switches on it? Yeah. Yeah. Quincy Impala, you know what I'm saying? Um, Condre dropped the, when he came with the... Le Cap. The, uh, what was it? Uh, the Coupe de Ville yeah. convertible. Yeah. That bitch was hard. Uh, one more. One more. Ooh. That's pretty hard. 
I guess since the bumper kit shit. Since the bumper kit shit, uh, I guess I would have to say Toast definitely because Toast was the first yeah. complete slab. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. All righty, man. You got any shout outs we get up out of here? I'm going to give a shout out to Slab OG TV for yes, having sir. me and doing this interview. You know what I mean? And I think it was, I, I, I you know what I'm saying? You took me to some places I, you know, I ain't <laughs> been in a long time. You feel yeah. Me? And, uh, I got to give a shout out to my new project that I got out, Guns and Butter. Mm -hmm. It's not just a music, it's a movement mm -hmm. about social, economic sovereignty and independence. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's not history, it's his story. Mm -hmm. And I just don't believe that Jews will let Nazis educate their children. You know what I'm saying? So we shouldn't be letting people educate our children. We should be that's kind of negligent of us. We need to be on top of our game. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that if you give a man the power to feed you, you also give a man the power to starve you. So economic independence is very important with black people. We should have our own businesses. MLK should be tricked out and uh, we need to get on our game. So that's what Guns and Butter is about. I'm repping that. You know what I'm saying? Slab OG TV, we repping that. And Y'all make sure y'all go out and get that project because mm. it's banging. How, how can I get to it? Uh, go on Apple Music, Spotify, you know what I'm saying? All of the major uh, online platforms, Amazon, shit like that. You can get, you can get to it on all of those mm. major networks. Yeah. And I got to give a shout out to my boy Top Dog 3B. That's one of the most solid, solid uh, players in the game. Always been a player. Like, I did some time one time, man, and my boy Top, I was going through a dark little spell. Man, the man kept money on my books, mm -hmm. wrote me, you know what I'm saying? Always told me to keep my head up and stay up on my game, do my shit. So, you know, me and that nigga, we down forever, so. Yeah. And I want to give a shout out to the original members of the S -A -S -S -U -C, you know what I'm saying, for carrying the flag. You know what I mean? Like making the world feel what, you know what I'm saying, what that H-Town culture was like. You know what I'm saying? Putting that shit on the map in the music game, Swisher House. I want to give a shout out to all them niggas, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, them niggas kept that shit. Them niggas did that shit. Yeah. When they first did that music, I didn't understand it. So I was kind of like, because I was from a different era. Yeah. And I kind of <laughs> wasn't really feeling it. I was like, man, I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. But when I started to realize, I'm like, damn, these niggas talking about what we do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I gained a whole lot of respect for it. Because when you listen to Scarface music, you know Scarface don't talk about that kind of stuff. Yeah. Really. And, you know, the, the rappers from our era, they didn't talk about that. Mm. But they was explaining to the world what Houston do. Mm. You know what I mean? And it was the most dynamite shit. Like, my top five slab riding songs is... Riding on foes, me and Mo, we talk about it all the time. J Dog, that's mm -hmm. one. Uh, Diamonds up against the wood, Pimp C, R I P Pimp C, yeah. UGK. Uh, uh, my song, In the Lack, with uh, that boy uh, Sean Solo, did the track with a fat pat, pat sample in it. And you could just pick about any one of Kiki's songs. Yeah. Know, however, you want to pick it, any one of them, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I would have to say, Fat Pat. Do you like what you see? That's one of my favorite because yeah. I think Big Poke has spit one of the greatest verses of all time on that motherfucker, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Baby, yeah. let me jump in your brain as a slide down main with a fist full of grain. Screams rain from the top of the benzo. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That boy was spitting on that hoe, so. Yeah. Already, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. This slab OG TV, we got an OG up in here. I mean, Hey man, he gave y'all the game, gave y'all the history. This is one of my favorite interviews I done did so far. Uh, you know, just basically gave y'all the game from the beginning to the end. We not even ended yet, you know what I'm saying? But beginning to now, you know what I'm saying? So this just the beginning. Do, this know? just the beginning. I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to doing a whole lot more work with you. Mm -hmm. And if y'all ain't hip, 
Y'all make sure y'all get up on this Slab Riders magazine. Yeah. Y'all see, they got little Yos on the front. Yeah. Little Toast. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? SA Fools. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Homestead in the building. Yeah. You know, you, you don't get no better than that, bro. Yeah. You got to represent that Slab Riders. Yeah. The magazine. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah. Already, man. Yeah. Slab OG TV, we out. Mm-hmm.